Greetings and welcome to SORT Scientific Space Program Episode 4, where we are continuing the business of going into planetary. I'm currently launching the things that are going to Duna. First, this flyby slash orbit probe. And uh, later I'm gonna launch the manned craft Duna 1. I'm starting with the probe because its burn time is lower. It has a higher thrust to weight ratio. So that one goes first, and second comes the, the manned mission, which happened to be just behind the probe in the orbit, so we're gonna launch at the same um, time. And as you see, this craft is not, not ideal, so it wobbles quite a lot. But, uh, you know, yeah, the new SAS fortunately can handle this under most circumstances. Not always. But you compensate for it. And uh, as you see, I transferred the fuel from the well from the external tank into the internal tank because the fuel doesn't flow naturally. But you, know, you can just keep transferring it, and we have used most of the fuel in the external tank just doing this ejection. But that's all good, and we start taking some scientific readings on the way out, and that's it. Now we're launching yet another probe. This one is going to ELU, and it's using some new technologies that we have been able to research thanks to all our readings in solar orbit, and a few readings I did on Kerbin off-camera using aircraft, but they're really minor in this context. So we get this into orbit, and uh, we it's going to demonstrate one of the new technologies, which are these extendable solar panels, which should allow us to have ample power even at the very edge of the solar system. So we do the usual shakedown of uh, testing all the scientific equipment and making sure everything works. And uh, then we plan our ejection. Because we have the ELO window and yeah, we're gonna go. So we still have the ascent stage for the last piece of it. And we're gonna use that. and. Uh, this will create some debris in orbit, but that's just the way it's going to have to be. I have a feeling this is not going to be our, my most long-running series, and having some debris on Kerbin orbit is, well, I'm not going to care too much this uh, series about it. And here we show off our second new technology, the nuclear engine, which uh, actually is kind of critical for this mission. You see, we're gonna have to do first this rather expensive ejection maneuver and then a major course correction to get our inclination and such correct. So without a nuclear engine this would have to be a very large spacecraft and we only we only want to carry a little bit a little bit of science equipment out there. So we finished the ejection and now we do corrections on our corrections and we should, with this maneuver, be able to be on our way. And you see, I have used just a bit of fuel. So even the, this entire uh, ejection from Kerbin is not really that hard, because I'm using the nuclear engine, and it's fantastic. Uh, I haven't used it for, well, up until now in this program, and man, kind of miss it. So great. So, we have left the Kerbin system and we are now just waiting for our maneuver node. Of course, taking some science, scientific readings in the process, as is par for the course. And back at the launch pad, we are launching a sister probe of the ELU probe. This one has a very similar design, but pretty much the opposite mission. Instead of going flying past a planet at the edge of the solar system, this one is going to land on Moho. So this is going to be my first attempt at landing on another planet for science. So we get into orbit and we do the usual test of the systems. We have science and we have landing legs for the first time. And with the probe in a stable orbit and all sh systems checks out, we carry on to the next task, which is the original Moho probe's encounter with Moho. So before we get 
too close, we're gonna do a slight correction because we want to be be flying past as close as possible so that we get the science for uh, space near Moho. Then we have two celestial biomes in for one, basically. So we arrive at uh, the edge of Moho sphere of influence, and uh, the orbit we are gonna end up on may not be the most productive one, but this is intended as a one-shot probe, so if it can do anything at all after this encounter, that's a bonus. So we are planning a, a maneuver node just so that we have an alarm for periapse. And uh, here I'm gonna do something I don't do a lot. I'm gonna play this footage back in real time. So from now on, we are at real, real speed, real uh, playback speed. So that, so that you can see how fast this thing is flying past Moho, because it's uh, it's quite extreme. So we're taking some scientific readings, uh, still in space high over Moho, and we're waiting to pass through the, the, the barrier to space close to Moho. And I have an idea of where this is, but I'm not quite sure. So we're just gonna try a bit. And again, this <laughs> Moho is still a planetary sized body for KSP, so seeing it move by at this speed is weird. Yet now we have camera switching to another position. Is this near Moho? Uh, no, it is not. We're not gonna send that data, we're just gonna throw it away. Uh, where can they? Oh man, this is, this is so fast. Even though we're only going like 6 kilometers per second, it looks. Yeah, it's surreal almost. There. Yes, yes. Now we have the data for uh, space near Moho. Let's transmit it. Maybe we can catch another sample. But we have already passed our periapsis. So we can... Uh, more data. Which we're gonna send. And... Uh, mm, did it work? Let's try, let's try trans transmitting again. It's done? Hmm. Well, I, I don't know if I got the science for that or not. So, if we, yeah, now we're high over Moho again. Hmm. It's not even worth transmitting the goo canisters science because I've done it so many times in Moho space already. It's very low return. Well then, that's, that's Moho. I will see you again soon for a closer look. But for now we're just gonna watch it drift by very fast. Yeah, now we're, we're picking up the speed at Fudge again because we are done here. Actually this probe can do one more thing before being, well, retired. It can take a, a measurement of the Sun in solar orbit at a new record low altitude. But that's about it. And now we're gonna launch the next Moho mission from Kirby in orbit. And this, this one turns a lot faster because it's got an uh, ASCS module on the little lander. Because I want to be able to turn even if the engine is not activated and I want to be turned fast enough so that I don't crash. But this of course, together with the larger fuel tank and slightly other design changes, makes the craft heavier. And I want to have even more delta V in the, the nuclear stage so that I can get uh, well, so that I can get into Moho orbit and hopefully even to a suborbital arc before having to ditch it. So that we can spare as much fuel as possible in the lander, just, you know, you know to get a good margin, safety margin. So we, again, we do corrections on our corrections and we get a Moho encounter without having to do a correction, uh, uh, a plane change. Which is, well, it's very good because plane changes to Moho can be huge, we're talking kilometers per second. So not having to do that saves me a lot of fuel. And over at the ELO Pro, they're, they're quite difficult to tell apart honestly, we are going to do our massive plane change. Which we need to do before the Moho lander probe exits Kerbin Sphere of Influence. Just because of where the nodes are, we can also use this opportunity to take yet more readings in solar orbit, because you can never get too many of those, right? 
So that node is almost done. I skipped forward quite a bit. And uh, yeah, we don't have the encounter really. So we're gonna have to do corrections of our corrections. And now the game doesn't really want to admit I actually have an encounter. So it's uh, kind of eh, maybe, maybe not. But uh, eventually I get it, uh, I convince it to let me plan a alarm. So we're gonna finish this episode up with the Moho Lander exiting Kerbin. And uh, that's it. That's what we have time for today. Thanks for watching. I will see you next time. Bye!